Hey, what is going on guys? And today I want to do a tier list for the metagame uh, as I expect it to be going into this format. So we've only had just about a week with this new format. We haven't had too many uh, events. There's a couple regionals going on today and a remote dual regional going on tomorrow. Um, so I might have to redo this with the results from there, but I think we can go ahead and just start off on the tier list. So start off tier one decks. Uh, I think nobody will be surprised when I put Labyrinth and Fire King at the top of the tiers right now. I think that they are far and away the strongest things you can play, especially after uh, the top decks of last format all got hit. Um, speaking of which, we can just go ahead and move those there. Uh, I don't think there's any order uh, that I put Labyrinth over Fire Kings. Um, I think it, it, they, they both will probably be the top decks going into the, the Phantom Nightmare format as well, considering they're both getting really strong support. Uh, Fire King in the, I think it's uh, Snake Eyes Populous and Labyrinth in Transaction Rollback. Uh, so both really insane decks uh, getting really powerful cards. Uh, so going next, uh, really I'd put Rescue Ace um, at the top of tier two. Uh, realistically, I think that it lost the least in the last ban list uh, and also it getting the Snake Eye support as well, it can make use of it. I really think there's no reason that it shouldn't be the top deck, especially going into Phantom Nightmare. Uh, after that, I actually put Manadium. Um, I think Manadium is obviously it was the best deck that didn't lose much of anything. Uh, it might have lost like a couple floodgates or you know something like that but uh, really it didn't lose hardly anything uh, and uh, basically the decks that were keeping it back did lose more so uh, that's why I put it above purely um, and uh, unchained unchained I'm actually gonna put in rogue uh, I really so purely lost you know a little bit it just keeps losing little pieces here and there uh, but truth be told I really don't think that purely lost a ton uh unchained lost too much in my opinion uh and if you're like saying like oh no unchained didn't lose a like that much and only lost to shiraba that's not a ton H any deck that is going towards instant fusion to maintain its combo lines is not good it it's just not um so i really don't like uh, unchained the direction that it's going so I'm gonna put it in rogue uh, let's see so that's really the top decks that I'm looking at let's see what else have we got uh, so I guess we'll start at the beginning so I think exo sister I'm gonna put it in format dependent right it could be really good um, especially with labyrinth and fire kings being the top decks but if there's something that comes out of the woodwork like runic or uh, sprite or some kind of thing like that I really think that it won't be that insane. So I'm not going to place it anywhere in general, uh, but I think it has the potential to be really good. Uh, so if you have your Exocitor cards, maybe break them out, test them a little bit. Uh, Sword Soul, I'd put actually above Unchained and Rogue. I think Sword Soul's really good, uh, just as like a standard deck. Uh, it can't do much with things like Lib or um, or Ib, I should say, uh, but it's still it's still the same. Sword Soul deck that's been playable for, you know, however long. Uh, Runic. Runic's kind of weird to me because, like, it didn't lose much, but at the same time, I don't know if I really want to put it anywhere like here. I, I, I put it above purely, but maybe below Manadium. Uh, I think Runic is a deck that just is inherently flawed. Uh, like with a for like big tournaments so it might not see results like that obviously i know joshua schmidt won uh ycs bologna with runic bestial but that's i i'm gonna maintain that that was a great a great player piloting a good deck uh, rather than an insane deck <laughs> um sprite i would put at the bottom of tier two uh, obviously getting back the third starter is nice but what is that really changing for the deck i don't think there's much uh rika so You'd think that one Dryas, one healer, would make Rika unplayable. But what people have been telling me who play Rika is that it's fine without it. Because you just replace 
the uh, two Dryas, and I think the, I don't even think you played more than one healer, but uh, you replace it with more Aroma Seraphic Jasmines and more uh, Synabalon Meliers because neither of those are once per turn. So I'm gonna actually going to put it somewhere around here in Rogue. Uh, I don't think it's tier one. I think at this point it's just a known quantity. Uh, like, it's not going to catch people off guard as much as it used to. But I think it's not, uh, it's not a bad deck. Uh, RDA, I'm going to go ahead and just put it in the bottom of Rogue. Uh, there's nothing that it's doing that something like Dragon Link isn't already doing. Uh, speaking of which, Dragon Link... Uh, I want to put it above Sprite, but I'm going to put it below Sprite. Uh, Orcist. Um, I, I, I'm not going to talk about Dragon Link. Everybody knows Dragon Link. It's a known quantity. It, it, it's just a deck that persists. Uh, Orcist, however, I think Orcist has a lot of potential. Um, I don't necessarily think that Orcist is the best deck you could be playing. Uh, there's things like the Bestial Horus Orcist. Uh, people have been trying to pill me on Orcist Striker, but I just don't believe them. Overall, I think Orcist is fine. I think, I do think, however, I'm going to put it in format dependent for right now. I'm not saying it's a bad deck. I'm saying that it really depends on how the format shapes up, right? If we see a lot of graveyard hate, like Abyss Dweller or um, Silent Graveyard, uh, stuff like that, then Orcus isn't going to do that well. However, if we're seeing more like hand traps like Imperm and Ash and Droll, stuff like that, it could do really well. It kind of just depends on how the format shapes up. Uh, Vanquish Soul? Vanquish Soul is actually really strong. Uh, I would actually put it above Sprite. Um, I think that the only thing it lost was, what, two copies of There Can Be Only One, and that was normally a side deck card. Uh, I don't think that there's any reason to really say that the deck is, is dead or anything. I think it's a perfectly fine deck. Uh, Cybers, 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 Cybers. It's probably unplayable. I'll put it in format dependent. It, uh, no, I'm not even going to say that. It's it's bottom of Rogue. It's not unplayable. Uh, Mathmax Circular is insane, uh, but so is the Firewall cards. Um, I think that there's absolutely no reason to look at the Cybers pile and say like, oh, you can't play this at all. This deck is completely like dead. But I would hazard a, anyone from picking this deck up and taking it to an event right now. Um, Unless you want to be like the X Factor, right? Unless you're taking the X Factor, nobody's going to know what to do against the Cyber Firewall cards. Uh, otherwise, I don't really think it's worth playing. Uh, same thing with Dark World. Um, Dark World has the potential to do a lot. It always does. Uh, if your opponent isn't playing hand traps or doesn't see them, uh, you might just be able to hand loop them for their life savings and then just kill them on the next turn. Uh, and you can always do the, the Ken and Gen stuff, the Acid Golem stuff, uh, but overall, I would I, I would caution it. Uh, branded. I'll put Branded at the bottom of tier two. Gimmick Puppet Lock is still frustrating and annoying. Uh, it still is an incredibly consistent deck with a super strong grind game and a really powerful resource loop. Um, I just really, <laughs> I think a lot of people just want Branded to kind of not necessarily leave the game, but more or less just like people to move on and for them to stop giving support to Branded. Um, last two decks are Infernoble and Tier Limits. Uh, nobody's going to look at me sideways when I say Infernoble's unplayable now. Uh, that deck lived or died off resolving Isolde like before it got banned. So now that they don't have Ice Hold, there's going to be a lot that they're going to have to do to catch up and make ground. All right. Now, here's the deck I always catch flag flack for, uh, both from my friends and viewers. I have been saying that Tier Limit is Cope since the Slaughter list that killed it. And I'm still going to say that Tier Limit is Cope now that there are no Millers. And some people will look at me and say like, oh, no, Tier Limits is insane. It's like such a strong deck. I mean this in the nicest way. But Tier Limits has lost everything that enabled it right now. 
you can no longer go like diviner pitch a miller and then make beatrice and beatrice send stuff that's not strong enough you are like people are now looking at pilgrim reaper as a way to supplement it and it's like sure you can do like the mali into dangerous into you know mali again for a rank six but every time you do that why wouldn't you just make beatrice instead of pilgrim reaper it's also gotten to the point where people are looking at beast warrior engines to make Bujin Sukuyomi and Mill 5. Which, sure, that sounds fine, but when you're looking at beast warrior engines to make a rank for, they just don't exist. The best one that like we've found when I've talked to people about tier elements is the fucking ancient warrior cards, and it's not good. So if you want to play tier elements, go ahead and play tier elements. I'm not going to stop you, but I'm not going to tell you it's the right choice. I think that if you have the ability to play something else, you should. Same thing with Infernoble. Um, but anyways, that is just my first impressions of the format. Um, I think that a lot of these things could be subject to change, right? There might be something that happens in Dark Worlds and Rika that just propels it to tier one. Uh, there might be something in Menadium. Uh, that just drops it down. There might be some new tech cards that come out, something like that. Uh, we still don't know what world premieres we're getting from Phantom Nightmare, uh, but I think for the foreseeable future, I think this is a pretty accurate tier list, and I'll be interested in how the tier list changes uh, closer to Phantom Nightmare's release. So, so, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment. If you really enjoyed, make sure to subscribe, but that is all for me, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace!